Today, we're going to investigate this limit. The limit is x goes to zero of sine of x over x that's actually equal to one. And this limit is one of the most foundational and important limits in calculus with applications in physics, astronomy, engineering, and so many other places. And one of the reasons that this limit is so helpful is that I can restate it in this form as the so-called small angle approximation, which says that for small values of the angle x, that sine of x and x are about the same. Having trigonometric terms like sine of x in your formulas and your equations often makes them a lot messier, more challenging to solve. But if you can use these small angle approximations, your formulas become a lot simpler. In this video, we're going to do several things. I'm going to show you some applications of this formula. I'm going to give you a geometric proof that shows why this formula is useful and try to discuss how foundational it is throughout calculus. Now, I actually wanted to begin with the Tycho supernova. That's the little red ball there. I've actually done a different video on the Tycho supernova before. That's how much I like it. And imagine as an astronomer, I asked, what was the diameter of the Tycho supernova? Well, we can use a little bit of a trick to try to estimate what it's going to be. Imagine I'm here on Earth and I'm looking out at the supernova and I'm trying to figure out, well, what is that height little d? Now, astronomers have all sorts of tricks for being able to figure out the distance from Earth to the actual supernova. They look at the light that's coming from the supernova and they look at its frequencies and they have all these tricks to estimate the distance from yourself to the supernova, capital D. So how do you get to the diameter of the supernova if you do know the distance to it? Well, the other thing you know is if you look out at the side, you can figure out, well, what kind of angular distance does that supernova obey? What percentage of the Earth's sky is occupied by this object from our vantage point? And so we have the angle delta. Well, then just by a little bit of trigonometry, if you take the tangent of, well, half of delta, delta divided by two, well, that's nothing but half the diameter of the supernova divided out by big D. That's just the definition of tangent. But if I think about what the angle is, I mean, I'm standing here looking out at this object incredibly far away. The angle is completely trivial. It's very, very, very small. So that small angle approximation applies. Tangent is sine over cosine. Cosine of effectively zero is just one. And since sine of the angle is just the same thing as the angle by our small approximation, this is nothing more than delta divided by two. So I get this really simple formula for being able to figure out the diameter of objects like the Tycho supernova. Okay, so with that motivation, now let's turn back to the question of how do I know that this limit is even true? To gain at least some visual intuition about what's going on with this limit, I'm going to turn to Maple Learn, which allows me to graph this really, really nicely. I'm going to plot sine of x, and I can see the graph of that, as well as the plot of x. My thanks to Maple Learn for sponsoring today's video, and I always like using Maple Learn because it's so nice and easy to make pretty graphs like this that we get to talk about. And what you can see here is that if I contrast the graph of x and the graph of sine of x, well, far away from the origin, they have almost nothing to do with each other. But let me zoom in right here at the origin. I'm just going to keep on zooming, and as you'll notice, the graph of sine of x and the graph of x, they're getting closer and closer together. I mean, if I really zoom in a lot here, at some point, you can barely tell that there's a difference between them at all. And this is the sense in which sine of x and x are approximately the same when x is really close to zero. This, of course, is not yet a proof, which is why we have a little bit more work to do. So what I want to begin with is a pizza slice, a, a portion of a full circle. That is, a circle of radius 1, and the proportion is given by the angle of x. If I drop the vertical from that top corner, I get this little line segment called AB, and I have this triangle, the triangle O, A, and B. And I can use a little bit of trigonometry. I mean, what is the definition of cosine of x? It's the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is just one. And so, for example, the adjacent is just cos of x. Similarly, the opposite is sine of x, because sine of x is the opposite over the hypotenuse, which in this case is one. So these are just the definition of sine and cosine. But there's more that I can do on this particular plot. For example, that line segment between 0 and b, I can actually extend it out a little bit until if I drop a vertical, I go and hit the other corner of my pizza slice at this point that I've labeled c. And okay, what's the length of the pink curve? Well, if I take the tangent of x, tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. The adjacent, 0 to c, is 1 as well. And so the opposite is just the tangent of x. So that's where you can draw a tangent of x 
on the standard sort of unit circle definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, so where am I going with this? My goal is to figure out the area of my pizza slice. But my claim here is the area of my pizza slice, which I'm going to call OBC, it's sort of sandwiched between the smaller triangle and the bigger triangle. So, so the area of the pizza slice is bigger than OAB, the smaller triangle, but it's smaller than OCD, the bigger triangle. And here's the trick. Both of those triangles, I can tell you exactly what their area is. Area is one half base times height. And so the area of that smaller yellow triangle is just one half cos of x times sine of x. For the bigger triangle is one half tangent of x times one, so one half tangent of x. So I've sort of taken the pizza slice and I'm squeezing it in between these two other triangles. You might already be guessing, I'm going to be taking some limit as x goes to zero soon enough. But I have to figure out the area of that pizza slice of the OBC. So, okay, what can I do there? I'm going to simplify things a little bit. The area of that pizza slice I'm going to claim is the product of two things. It's the product of the total area of a total circle, pi r squared. In this case, the radius is 1, so pi 1 squared. But because I don't have the entire 2 pi radians of my circle, I only have a proportion of that x, I have to multiply this by x divided by 2 pi. This is going to give me the proportion of the circle that I have. Okay, multiply these out, and I get the value of x over 2, and so I can plug it in here, and I can say that x divided by 2 is sandwiched between 1 half cos of x sine of x and 1 half tangent of x. Okay, so that's sort of the geometric setup here. Now I'm just going to do a little bit of algebra to this inequality. First things first, I don't like my tangent. I'm going to replace it with sines and cosines. So tan of x is sine of x over cos of x. Second, I see that there's a half in front of every one of these terms. Let's get rid of the half. I don't like those halves. Next, I see on both sides, I have a sine of x. So I'm going to divide out by sine of x on all three sides, so then the outside is going to go away and I have to introduce it in the middle here, so it divides out by the sine of x. Notice, I'm going to be taking the limit as x goes to zero, as it gets close to zero, but never actually equal to zero. And so sine of x here is non-zero when it's close but not actually equal to zero, so I'm allowed to divide through in this way. If you prefer, I can flip this around and note that when you do the reciprocals, the inequalities all flip through the other direction as well. Now, the reason I've done all this, the reason I've set this whole argument up, is that I want to take the limit as x goes to zero for every one of these terms in the inequality. And if I do that, then the thing I'm interested in, sine x over x, and the limit of that as x goes to zero, the thing in the middle, the thing in blue, is now sandwiched between two different limits that I know the answer to. Cosine of zero is just one, and so both of these limits on both sides are just equal to one. And if you're just sandwiched between one and one, if you're both bigger than or equal to one and smaller than or equal to one, you are equal to one. And thus, the limit as x goes to zero of sine of x divided by x is equal to one, we've proven our claim. Now, this was what I call a geometric proof. We're not using any advanced calculus. We're not using derivatives, say. If you know calculus, you could do this limit a lot easier. You could use something called L'Hopital's rule, where you take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom, you just get cos of x over 1, and it would easily evaluate out to be 1. Indeed, I'm going to go very briefly to the Maple calculator, which is by far the best and free calculator app for your phone. It's not even really a calculator because it just does so much incredible mathematics. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to input this particular limit. So I'm going to do the limit as x goes to zero of sine of x divided out by x here. And notice that Maple Calculator tells us that the answer is indeed equal to one, as we suspected. But more importantly, if I click the steps button, it's going to show me the argument for how this works. It says, use L'Hopital's rule, take the derivative of the top, derivative of the bottom, plug it into the value of cosine, and you get the value of one. Now, the key thing here is that Maple Calculator is smart. It knows calculus, as perhaps do you, the viewer of this particular video. But how do we develop calculus in the first place? That is, we're using much more advanced calculus techniques than the original geometric argument. And it turns out that there's a little bit of a begging of the question. Well, hold on. How do you even know that the derivative of sine of x is equal to cos of x? If you know that, like the Maple Calculator does, then you can use L'Hopital's rule. But, but why is the derivative of sine of x cos of x? Well, it turns out 
that it depends on this very limit, and so we can't actually use that argument to prove it, at least not the first time. If I want to develop calculus for the first time and show you that the derivative of sine of x is cos of x, I have to use the definition of the derivative. It's the limit as h goes to zero of sine of x plus h minus sine of x divided out by h. And I can use a little bit of trickery to actually evaluate this limit, sine of x plus h, well this is an addition formula so I can expand that out using some trigonometric rules. I then notice that there's a couple terms with sine of x so I can put those together as sine of x times cosine of h minus 1 plus cos of x sine of h all divided by h. I'm stepping through this algebra quickly because it's sort of not the point but you can pause and think through it carefully. I'm then going to separate out these terms and notice what I get. If I faithfully do this algebra, I get two different limits at the bottom. One of those limits, the one on the right, the limit is h goes to zero with sine of h divided by h is exactly the limit we started with. So until we know the answer to this limit, we can't actually apply L'Hopital's rule and the derivative of sine of x to get the value of this limit. And that's why we had turned to the more basic geometric arguments to show this limit first, then you can go and develop the derivative of sine of x and so forth, and now we have the power of calculus to make it easier every other time. The left-hand limit here is a similar geometric argument. I'll leave that as an exercise for you to do. So ultimately, whether you're stuck in a calculus problem, whether you're trying to formally develop the tools of calculus, or whether you're in any number of applications where you just want to simplify your formulas with sine of x is approximately equal to x, this particular limit is probably the most important limit in all of calculus. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Definitely check out either Maple Calculator for your phone or Maple Learn for your computer. Finally, give the video a like for the YouTube algorithm and we'll do some more math in the next video.